an urgent message that I want to just get out on this channel. And it's really just kind of an explanation of how I viewed things in the past on this channel and really what I think is correct now versus what I thought was correct then. If you're new to this channel and you haven't actually seen my older videos, this might not make a lot of sense to you. Uh, but still watch it anyway, because what I'm going to do in this video is kind of break down and distill. I'm going to condense everything that I said in the last kind of three or four years on this channel and really just summarize what I think about it now. So it will kind of save you a lot of time. If you were going to, you know, go back and watch my older videos, watch this one instead, because this is like the most up to date um, information that I have. So yeah, long story short, I was wrong before. Uh, not all the time, but in a couple of videos specifically where I would talk about different things. So the first one was astral projection. In the past, uh, on this channel, I've kind of made videos talking about astral projection and basically saying that it's not real. Basically saying that uh, at the time, this, bear in mind this was years ago, I was basically saying that I thought astral projection was purely just a lucid dream or just something that happened in the mind. And that is absolutely not the case. Um, and we know this now f through studying lots of different evidence and stories and uh, different analyses and explanations of things. But there is a distinct difference between a the brain state when you are lucid dreaming uh, versus when you're astral projecting, because they are two completely different things. Lucid dreaming is not even all in the mind, but predominantly in the mind, uh, exploring that kind of realm. Uh, whereas astral projection is in a different plane. It's in the astral plane, literally, and you are able to interact with different things, entities and um, places outside of yourself. And I say that in quotes because there really is nothing outside of yourself. It is, it is all you, basically. But for argument's sake, let's just... Let's just summarize and say that lucid dreaming is kind of mainly uh, in one area, whereas astral projection is outside of that area or kind of other areas. The reason it's so confusing is because the, the lines are kind of blurred. You know, in a lucid dream, you, you can interact with and access things that are in, that are outside of your mind. You know, other people's dreams, uh, different things, different dimensions and uh, experiences you can have in a lucid dream. And astral projection is really kind of similar, but it is different in a lot of ways. So basically I was wrong before when I said that astral projection doesn't exist, because it does. And that's really something that I just kind of was wrong about before. I just hadn't done enough research. I hadn't looked enough into it. You know, at the time I had actually had an experience, which now I can clearly see was astral projection. Um, but at the time when I made the video, I just didn't know enough. I wasn't sure it was something that happened when I was very young. Uh, I just didn't really know enough. And I just kind of summarized the popular belief at the time, which was that it wasn't real. Uh, but it absolutely is, is real and that is the case. And uh, I know this now with a lot more certainty. So uh, the next one kind of follows on from the last one, which is that lucidity is in the mind. The state of lucidity being aware of the facts you're dreaming is really a very reductionist way of saying that you are accessing a higher consciousness. It's been said in the lucid kind of dreaming community that when you lucid dream, you're kind of going downwards in terms of your consciousness. You're kind of falling asleep and you're descending down into sleep, into kind of um, the realm of your subconscious where things, you know, but really that's not the case at all. You're in fact ascending, you're going upwards. Um, and the, the best way I've heard this explained is that if you think of your physical body now as kind of a very dense, uh, restrictive realm, okay? Things are very dense and, and slow here. When you, go, when you fall asleep, you're not limited by your physical body or the laws of physics, let's say, in this 3D realm. So when you fall asleep, you're actually ascending in terms of your consciousness is much less restricted. You're more free. You're not bound by the limits of space and time. And, you know, to some degree, programming and conditioning that you would be in waking life. So in that sense, you're really able to access things that you can't access in 3D waking life. And for that reason, it's not really descending. You're actually ascending, going higher in consciousness, and therefore, um, it's not all in your mind. Your mind, if you think of your mind as like a tool, it's kind of along for the ride. Your mind 
is just one kind of aspect of your physical body, but that doesn't mean that your mind equals your consciousness. Your consciousness is infinite and not, you know, completely connected to your body. You, so, you, so your consciousness is very much like a, a field of energy that is kind of linked to, to your physical body and your mind, but it's also separate from your physical body and your mind. So when you lucid dream, your consciousness is almost like set free from the confines of your physical body and your mind and the, and the programming and conditioning that is associated with those things. So it's not all in your mind. You're, it's actually the opposite. It's actually everything and every, um, everywhere all at once. And of course, there's so much we don't know about consciousness, you know, so I get that. I know, I know how much I don't know, if that makes sense. But the one thing I am completely certain about is that consciousness is not all in the mind. And this has been proven with modern science, but also ancient knowledge. I've spent thousands of hours literally researching this stuff and summarizing what uh, other experts and people who, who have studied this have, have kind of found. And the overwhelming thing that everyone seems to point towards is that consciousness is not confined to your body. Your, your body is kind of like a tool and your consciousness is like using that tool. But your consciousness is not limited and constricted by that tool in any way. Um, and this has been shown through like non-locality, through quantum mechanics, through um, the holographic principles and things like that, where the, the modern science that we're learning about today has uncovered things that show that nothing is separate. Everything is interconnected at the cellular level. And when you, if you zoom in far enough, there is literally no separation between two particles. It doesn't exist. Uh, it, the illusion of separation is really what holds this kind of society together, but really there is no separation. Um, yeah, and this took me a few years to realize, and obviously when I started making these videos, I didn't know that. I felt it, but I didn't really know it confidently enough to say it. So that's where I was wrong before. Number three, uh, I used to say on this channel that lucid dreaming takes a long time to learn. I used to say that it's, it's, quite, it's quite difficult to do. That's not the case. And, and obviously this is, you know, it's a debate, isn't it? It's uh, in, in this community, it's a controversial topic, but really I, I feel like my audience here, you guys really know, uh, most of you at least know that we don't have to limit ourselves. What, what we believe in terms of our subconscious beliefs and our, you know, what makes up our, um, our personalities and beliefs doesn't have to be limiting itself. So if you believe it's gonna take a long time, then you will make it take a long time. If you don't believe it will take a long time, then you'll be able to do it faster. So really, there's no point holding yourself back and, and kind of standing in your own way when your beliefs play a huge part in how long it will take you to learn and how often you will lucid dream. And I have literally students in, in my uh, lucid breakthrough program that are able to lucid dream three, four, sometimes five or six times a week. And the, really the only change for some of them is they shifted their subconscious beliefs from believing that it's difficult and that it takes time to believing strongly that it's effortless and can be easy. That's really the only change for a lot of them. And the change in the results was enormous. Um, so really belief has a huge impact. Uh, yeah, on lucid dreaming, but I guess on everything as well. So if you do see any of these older videos from my channel, uh, just bear in mind, you know, point people towards this video or just remember this video where I kind of admitted I was wrong before and corrected it. Because I think it's very easy for YouTubers to kind of forget about the old videos, maybe even delete them. and pretend they never happened or they never kind of admit their mistakes. I'm admitting now that those three things I was wrong about. I was wrong to say astral projection is not real. I was wrong to say that lucid dreaming is only in the mind. And I was wrong to say that lucid dreaming has to take a lot of time. None of those things are true. Uh, so yeah, I hope this makes sense. I'd love to hear your opinion about this. So uh, yeah, leave a comment down below.